couple of weeks ago I did a video about how to find campsites and other different types of motorhome overnight parking and in that video I mentioned the term CS and CL sites. Since then a few people have asked me exactly what a CS and a CL site is, what the difference is, how they differ from normal campsites and also how they differ from airs in Europe. So today I'm going to answer all of those questions for you. Hey, I'm Kat and welcome to Wandering Bird. On this channel, we share tips and tricks to help motorhome and camper van owners make the most of their time on the road. And today's tip is helping you understand all about CS and CL sites. Now, if you've already used them, you know that there isn't actually a lot to understand. But like anything in motorhoming, that's easy to say, but if you're sitting there trying to figure it out, struggling how you book them or how to find them or anything like that, it can be quite confusing. So let's cut through the mystery surrounding CS and CL sites. Let's start with the basics. CS stands for Certified Site, CL stands for Certified Location, and they are pretty much identical on how they work. They are both small campsites, usually with a maximum of five pitches that camper vans, motorhomes and caravans are all able to use. They often have very basic facilities, so you can generally get some sort of electric hookup, water, point, uh, waste disposal, both for grey and for black and some are hard standing, some are grass. They basically just think of them like a small campsite. One set are affiliated to the Caravan and Motorhome Club, that's the certified location to the CLs. The other type, the certified sites, are affiliated to the Camping and Caravanning Club. Now, in order to use either CS or CLs, you need to be a member of that club. And generally, when you phone up to book, you'll have to give your membership number. Don't confuse CS and CLs with independent sites, those that aren't affiliated to either of the big clubs. You can still get independent sites, which are small. They might only have five or six different sites, but that doesn't mean they're a CS or a CL. And again, we'll talk about them a little bit more very shortly. But let's go back to what a CS and a CL site actually is. So assuming you're a member of the big clubs, you will be able to find them on the club's website. Both clubs like to hide them. They like to make it really difficult for you to find them. And it drives me nuts. We're members of both clubs and I find them both, both their websites, really difficult when you're trying to find out where the CS and the CLs are. The site that we use in order to find out just where everything is, is Search for Sites. Because CS and CL are only in the UK, and I believe actually some in Southern Ireland, so let's call it UK and Ireland based, you don't tend to get them elsewhere in Europe. And because they are just a UK island thing, Search for Sites covers them really, really well. What we tend to do, because they are our favourite type of campsite, she says, I'm sitting on a massive campsite at the moment, which is quite rare for us, we tend to prefer the smaller, quieter sites. And the really nice thing with the CS or CL sites, because you've only got five pictures, you generally get well away from any one from any big groups or anyone who wants to be noisy. Noisy kids aren't so prevalent on them because there aren't so many facilities for children. There might be a field that they can play in, but they don't tend to have climbing frames or kids' playgrounds or anything like that. Don't forget, these sites are independently run by the owners of the land, and they tend to be people who've got a bit of extra land, so farmers or Big estates sometimes, or even some attractions can have a CS or a CL site, but they are run by people. You won't find an office and a reception there. They're run by the people who generally own the land. So they don't put in huge amounts of facilities. You're not going to find a clubhouse or a restaurant, although if you plan it well, you will find a pub as you go down the road. And now those are the best types. But we like the quietness and the out of the way of them. It's basically just a safe parking place for us to park up the motorhome and then go off and explore on our bikes or with the car. So you don't tend to get the big families or the people who want a lot of entertainment on nightlife and stuff. They tend to be much smaller and quieter. Not all of them allow kids and not all of them allow dogs because they are farms. Well, a lot of them are farms, not all of them, of course, but a lot of them are farms where they've got a lot of livestock on. Some of them don't allow dogs at all, and a lot of them insist that dogs must be kept on a lead, so they don't have dog walks or dog runs or anything like that. So if you have got a dog, that is one of the downsides to using them, is that you can't always get the same freedom 
of space that you might do on a normal campsite. And exactly the same thing with the kids, although a lot of them have got like somewhere where you can go and feed the animals and stuff, especially at like lambing season and stuff, which is quite fun. But it's a totally different type of camping than you might be used to on a normal big site with bigger facilities. So as well as the peace and quiet that you generally will find on a CS or a CL site, one of the other reasons that we like them so much is the prices are generally a lot cheaper. Whereas you might pay 30, 35 pounds for a couple with a motorhome and a dog on a big, one of the club sites, on a CS or a CL site, you might pay only 15 or 20 pounds for an evening. So it was a big difference, it's about half the price. Um, and if like us, you don't tend to use all the facilities on a bigger site, then they're absolutely perfect. Now, as I touched on briefly, most of them have got electric hookup. They will have a water standpoint. You probably won't get water on each pitch, but you'll get somewhere in a communal area where you can pull up your van and get water. Also somewhere where you can dispose of both gray and black waste. Not every CS or CL site has got hard standing. Some of them are literally just fields on a farmer's field or whatever, so it'd be grass. And although that might be fine in the summer, if you are going to use them throughout the year, and many of them are open throughout the year, they're not all just summer campsites. Bear in mind that the fields can get very boggy. You can get a lot of mud and you might even get stuck. So be very careful when you're doing your research on which ones you want to use throughout the year. Hello, sweetheart. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. There are a couple of big downsides, certainly from our point of view, on using these smaller sites. For a start, you've got to phone and book directly with the owner, which is fine. Nobody minds picking up the phone. But don't forget that they're not sitting in an office at a reception at a site waiting for your call. They're running a farm or livestock or whatever business they happen to be running. So it's often really, really unlikely that you'll get them when you phone and want to book. And you have to leave your name and your number and also why you're phoning because their phone number is not just for the campsite. And then you have to wait for them to get back to you. And it can be frustrating, especially if you're like us and you tend to do sort of last minute trips. You're like, I want to go tomorrow. And it's quite tough to know who's got space, where you want to go, who can fit you in, especially as some people may not go back to you for a day or so. So we find that quite frustrating. I wish there was a way of booking them online. And also the other downside is it can be quite restrictive on your arrival times. Because you need to be met by the people who own the land, they will often have a quite small window when they're available to meet you at the entrance to show you wherever you've got to go. So often they will say, well, we've got to arrive between say four and seven. Which again, is not the end of the world, but if like us, it's a last minute trip or you're traveling across the country and you might get stuck in traffic or whatever, it can add to the stress of, right, I've got to hit this very small window. Unlike a normal campsite that normally you can arrive somewhere between, I don't know, 1 p.m. and 8 during the summer. So that's just something to bear in mind because they are normal people um, who have got other jobs to do other than just welcome you to their campsite. You have got a much smaller window. Departure's not as bad because generally it's just leave when you like as long as it's before midday or whatever. Um, but yeah, arrival can be a little bit tricky. Another question that we get asked a lot is how are CS and CL sites different from airs in Europe? If you don't know what an air is, I'll leave a link to a video here for you, which will explain all about that. But they are different in some quite fundamental ways. For a start, an air you don't have to book. In fact, you can't book an air in advance. It's literally turn up and if there's a space, you can take it. Whereas a CS and a CL site, you do have to book. They're not going to be very happy with you if you just turn up on the off chance that there might be space. So that's probably the biggest difference. Again, the price is slightly different. An air is generally going to be cheaper than a CS or a CL site. An air on average is probably around, I don't know, 10 euros for the night. A CS and a CL site, you're looking somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds for the night. Um, an air, you're unlikely to meet the owner. An air is literally just going to be an overnight parking spot. Very rare that there'll be somebody there to actually talk to, although a few of them do send someone around to collect the money once a day. Um, whereas a CS and a CL site, you're actually on somebody land you'll meet the owner when you arrive they'll tell you all the rules and everything else so those are some quite big differences and also an air is 99% of the time a hard standing pitch it's just started to rain I'm hoping the sound on this is still good um 99% of the time is a hard standing parking space whereas on a CS or CL site there could be just as many that are grass as there are hard standing ones so you've got to be careful with that a lot of people ask me which one's better if you're only going to join one club do you join the caravan and motorhoming club or the camping and caravanning club if you're just joining like we are just members of both of them so that we can get access to the CSs and the CLs as we travel 
If you're just going to join one, I would probably do the Caravan and Motorhome Club purely because they've got more. I believe they've got somewhere like 2,200 CL sites, whereas the Caravan and Camping Club have only got about 1,400. So there's quite a bit of difference on who is there. But as you'll see, they're actually pretty well spread out. If you look on search for sites, you can see the red and the green. Can't remember which way round which, but it'll see because one will say certified sites and one will say certified locations. But you'll see that they're actually pretty spread out so if they haven't got a cs in one area they'll probably have a cl quite nearby where you want to go that's the reason that we're in both so that we can use all of them as we travel but again just like all the other campsites in the uk during august they get booked up really really quickly so if you want one you're gonna have to book them up pretty soon if you're traveling outside of the peak season it's not quite as urgent to book in advance but i would because again they've only got five pitches so make sure that you book the one that you need before it all gets booked up now at the beginning of this video i briefly mentioned independent campsites and a lot of people seem to dismiss them thinking that they're not as good somehow as a club site we love independent campsites and there are more and more of them popping up now around the uk that are almost like an air. We stayed in one in Northern Wales the other week, Park Penny Bryn, check out that video if you'd like to see it. And that one is so close to being an air because you can pretty much just pull up. You don't really need to see the owner, although he did come around to make sure that you'd paid the money and everything. Um, and it had all the facilities that you needed, all hard standing pitches, it was great. And there are lots more of them coming in. Again, many of them are on search for sites, but don't just dismiss them because they're not affiliated to a club site. You can often find that the prices are way cheaper, but they're also not anywhere near as busy, which is great for people like us who don't like particularly busy, noisy, crowded campsites. So make sure that you check those out. If you'd like some more motorhoming tips and tricks, you might find either of these videos helpful to plan your next adventure. If you're new to the channel and you'd like more motorhoming tips, then by all means hit subscribe. I hope that helped answer all your questions. Thanks for your time. I'll see you on the next video.